Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasi here. So how do I get consistent sales with Google Ads? Now consistency is one big thing a lot of dropshippers have trouble with. And it is not really their fault because achieving consistency with dropshipping takes a lot of time, effort, and energy. And it also takes the right strategies in order to even achieve that in the first place. I personally know this because it took me roughly two to three years before I kind of found any type of consistency with Shopify dropshipping. But one thing you want to understand is that once you are able to find the right formula and the right strategy in order to be at least a little bit consistent month in and month out, it becomes a much easier process for you to then continue scaling your Shopify dropshipping store. So in this video, I want to show you exactly what I personally do in order to make my Google Ads dropshipping store very, very consistent, or at least not have too many big fluctuations throughout the months. But without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into it and find out exactly how I remain consistent profitably month in and month out. So the first thing I would like to show you guys before I actually jump into the Google Doc is the, my order metrics for the specific Shopify dropshipping store. Now, if I go ahead and look at this specific year, we can see that this store has done roughly $579,000, so over half a million dollars in sales for this year. But if you just look at the past 30 days, we can see that it has done roughly $56,819 within that time period. If we scroll down just a little bit until we get to this chart right here, we can see exactly what I'm talking about when I say consistency. As you guys can clearly see, this graph has a lot of ups and downs. There's this very, very weird dips and also these weird spikes up in terms of sales. But overall, if you kind of just graph a linear or a straight line through this specific graph, you'll see that it is somewhat straight. Besides looking at this specific chart right here where sales did drop to some things which I'll be mentioning in this video very soon, overall it was very, very consistent. So exactly how can you stay consistent despite the month it is, despite what's going on in the economy, or despite what's going on in the world. But now that I've kind of got this aside, let's jump into the Google Doc to see exactly how I can get so consistent sales with Google Ads month in and month out. The first thing you'll actually have to do before finding success with any of the things I'm about to mention is just gently destroy that like button down below. Just kidding, but hopefully you do do destroy that like button down below. It'll take just two quick seconds. Okay, hopefully you have done that. But let's start by talking about exactly what consistency means with Google Ads. One thing you want to understand is that Google Ads as a whole is very, very inconsistent. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? Well, if you think about it, every single day there are new users entering the market while the old ones are exiting the market. Meaning, if for example, you're selling wireless printers, there's only so many people that will want a wireless printer on any given day. For example, if I'm in the market for a wireless printer and I see that your store is selling it and I buy from you, there's a very, very low chance that I'll come in tomorrow again on Google and type in wireless printer because I already purchased one. I really don't need any more wireless printers. So what that means is that within a span of a day, I not only entered the market as a new user, but I also exited the market, which is why Google ads is somewhat inconsistent in that way. In addition to that, every single day, there are new people popping up on Google shopping ads or Google search ads and old people exiting because their stores failed or they were unable to find any types of results because maybe they didn't follow my videos. Just kidding. But whatever the reason, new competitors enter and leave the market every day. This causes a big, big shift in the auction that Google Shopping Ads puts your products into. So keeping this in mind, you can expect a little bit of inconsistency with Google Ads in that way as well. But the third and most important thing is that there are a lot of big brands competing for a lot of the most popular products. And because of this, a lot of the times you'll face a lot of inconsistencies because these big brands, a lot of people trust those brands much, much more than just your random drop shipping store. So because of that, you're bound to face more inconsistencies. But that does not mean that it is the end of the world that you can't use Google Ads profitably. As I just showed you guys on my order metrics, I've been doing it successfully this year and I've done over half a million with 99% of Google Ads. If you want more info on this store, I actually did a case study a few weeks ago on this store, which you can check out. I'll leave the link in the description. But now that we've kind of talked about exactly how Google Ads works, let's go ahead and start talking about the main point, which is how do I personally maintain consistency? So the first thing that I like to start talking about is the products because Believe it or not, the products is the meat of your business. What that means is that without the proper products, without you consistently adding more products, your Google Ads store is not going to be consistent, period. And a lot of people do find success with only 20 products, 30 products, but the problem is that success is very, very limited in terms of the time 
simply because within a few weeks to maybe even within a few months, if they get lucky, those products will eventually die out. That's just how e-commerce works. There's not a single product in the world which is gonna sell forever. So in order to really battle this, what should you be doing and what do I personally do to maintain this consistency? What I always recommend and what I always do is that every single day, Monday through Saturday, I add three to five new products based on the criteria which I've always laid out in my other videos. Number one criteria, over 20 to 25,000 monthly searches. Number two, less than five to seven dropshippers. And number three, minimum of 20 to $25 profit margin. If these three things you can meet for that product, you can count it as one of the five products or one of the three products that you add for the day. You want to be doing this consistently because without adding these products consistently, you will not be able to sustain your dropshipping business for too long. And this is mainly because, again, as I mentioned, Google Ads as a whole is very, very inconsistent. Consistently adding new products every day is going to help against the natural day-to-day -day fluctuations or inconsistencies of Google Ads. When one product stops selling on any given day, you can be sure that if you have 100 other products, there will be at least one to two more products that will kind of take the first product's place and sell on the second day. When you have more products, what happens is that each of the products that you have, specifically the winning products, are going to kind of bounce back and forth between sales. And that is exactly what you saw in order metrics where it kind of went up on some days, then it went back down and it went back up. That's simply because the main winning products on some days just didn't perform. But because I was consistently adding new products every day, because I had such a large amount of products on my list in the first place, other products kind of came in and helped me do the sale so that I didn't go in a loss on any given day. But in general, having more products kind of helps against the seasonality factor of certain products because some products are only summer products or some products are only winter products. When if they are big winning products for you and they suddenly die out, you don't want your store to just kind of go back to zero. And that is exactly what happened on this specific store where some of the biggest summer related products just stopped selling, hence why you saw that big drop at the very end. But because I have over a thousand products on this store, the drop is slowly going back up and it will be back up to normal once my campaigns optimize again and once they start showing these other products which are more winter gear a little bit more to the audience but that is the number one thing you can literally do if you don't follow anything else in this video make sure to follow this which is add new products consistently the second thing you want to be doing and which i did to maintain my consistency is that i was excluding bad products meaning those products which spent over my profit margins without any sales or bad keywords meaning those keywords which spent over ten dollars or over my profit margin in some cases without sale. Simply get rid of them every seven to 14 days. One thing you wanna understand is that the more often you do this, the more often your campaigns will fail. Now you may be looking at this and thinking that shouldn't doing this more often actually help you and your campaigns? And the answer is no. Simply because Google Ads is a time-based platform, its algorithm basically resets every time a big change is made on the campaign. And if you exclude multiple different products, if you exclude multiple different keywords, that is considered a big change in Google's eyes. It's going to reset the algorithm. That means it has to start back from zero and basically go through the products list, go through the keywords list and try to optimize again. Of course, this time frame around here is going to be different for each individual because if you're running campaigns at $1,000 a day budget. Of course, you wanna be checking much, much more often, maybe every two to three days, but for majority of drop shippers who are just starting out or even those who are intermediates or experts not spending over $1,000 a day, you should be checking every seven days and for the lower budgets, every 14 days because you really want to let your campaigns optimize. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've always done with Google Ads, which is just getting too anxious and just changing too many things. That has always led to bad results. So you really wanna take caution in that and not make too many changes too fast wait again seven to 14 days but another thing a lot of people fail to do is that they fail to divide up their products they think that if they have just one single testing campaign that's all they need to find good results and scale to millions of dollars with google ads and that is far from the truth because one thing you will see is that once you start adding more and more products your google general testing campaign is going to have a very hard time going through all these products and testing all these products. So in order to battle that, you wanna have multiple different testing campaigns running. Nowadays in 2020 and for this specific store, I have four different campaigns running. Campaign number one is a major testing campaign with a high bid. Basically, this is perfect for high ticket products or products with a higher profit margin. And when I say high bid, what I specifically mean is a bid of around 50 cents or so. You really don't wanna go above that unless you're selling products which are very, very high ticket, maybe up to 
$500 to $1,000 or more each, then you can go up to a dollar per link click. But otherwise, stick to around the 50 cent bid for this specific major campaign. Campaign number two is another general testing campaign with a medium bid. Now, this campaign has a very, very selective focus. The main focus of this specific campaign is to divide out those lower margin products, meaning maybe around the $20 profit margin or low ticket products in general, meaning $20 product or $30 product, so forth. What I do is that I put all those products within this specific campaign and I set the priority of this campaign to high. The campaign priority for this first campaign is medium. What happens is that since the campaign priority is high, Google is going to favor those products within this campaign more than this first campaign. So even if the products are that are within the second campaign are also visible in the first, it's still going to spend from the second campaign, which is what you want because this has a lower bid. Normally what I've seen is that the lower bid campaign, this one right here, actually is much more profitable than the first one simply because this is kind of a medium bid campaign, which is much lower than the first campaign. And the lower the bid, usually you'll see that you're making more money, but sometimes if it's too low, you may not get enough traffic. So you wanna kind of be taking caution with that as well. But let's move on to the third campaign. And this is one specific smart shopping campaign. Now with this smart shopping campaign, the main thing that I'm doing with it is simply testing products which failed in my other testing campaigns. What I've often noticed is that products usually fail if the bid is not correct. And this could be because the bid is maybe one cent higher or one cent lower. So because there's such a small room to wiggle in, I really like giving some products a second chance. So this is what the smart shopping campaign is for. Usually the products that failed in the other campus often end up failing here as well. But I've had times where products that failed in the other campus actually really took up within the smart shopping campaigns and they did majority of the sales. That's where the smart shopping campaign really shines because it has all of the control over the bidding and keywords and what keywords it ranks for, etc. So that's one great benefit of having a smart shopping campaign. The fourth campaign, which I run and I recommend you run as well, is a general testing campaign with a very, very low bid. That's exactly what I did for this store right here, which is why I was able to keep it consistently going. And this specific campaign runs at a bid of around 10 cents. This is a very, very low bid and usually you can expect very little traffic, but this campaign is great at catching those low hanging fruits because not every product does really well with high bids. Some products do really well with low bids and with a low bid campaign, what happens is Google is forced to go out and find only the highest quality traffic possible. So because of that, only high quality traffic comes onto your website and they end up purchasing because they're very high quality traffic. So that definitely helps as well. But this is kind of the general layout I'm doing for this specific store to really stay consistent throughout the month. But in addition to that, you should also be doing feed optimizations. And that is exactly what I did for this store as well. Now, what do I mean exactly by feed optimizations? Well, if you're using the shopping feed app by Simprosis, or any other shopping feed app, which does the task of pushing your products onto the Google Merchant Center, you can directly go on the shopping feed app and within that shopping feed app, simply edit the products. Now here is what I edit within the shopping feed app. I go within that specific product, which could be a potential winning product, meaning it has at least got me one sale and I choose a Google product category for that given product. What happens is when you provide a category for your product, Google finds it much easier to just go right into that category because you are the one who provided it and start ranking within that category. I've often noticed that this increases sales tremendously and it's a very, very simple tweak to do. But in addition to that, I start inserting keywords within the shopping feed app. Sometimes I do it directly from my Shopify store within the product editing section. I basically insert keywords that got sales and remove any bad keywords, which I had originally put inside the product page, but they ended up not getting me any sales, just spent a lot of money. I just remove them and replace them with the good winning ones, meaning those that got sales. In addition, I put all those winning keywords into the tag section. Now the tag section is the section on the right side of your Shopify product editing page. You wanna simply copy and paste all those winning keywords into the tag section as well because those tags are read by Google's algorithm. The final thing you wanna do is you wanna insert a product type because nowadays this product type is becoming very important in ranking on Google Ads. In fact, Google is not showing the product type if you have it on directly on the shopping ads. So this is really beneficial and something you definitely want to do for those winning products. Again, what I like to do here is I simply like to put my main winning keyword as the product type. So for instance, if you're selling wireless printers and your main winning keyword is wireless printer, go ahead and put wireless printer as the product. Type. But this is one amazing way to get those sales coming in even faster for longer periods of time to maintain that consistency. But that is not enough. The last thing you really want to be doing in order to remain consistent is duplicating the product 
and trying out different things because oftentimes the specific product page that you have may not be enough or may not be converting as good as it could be. So in this case, what you wanna do is you wanna simply duplicate that product, which is what I did for this Shopify store in order to really remain consistent. And I tested different main images for the duplicated product and I also tested different titles for some of them. Keep in mind that you can create multiple different duplicates of the product that's winning. So you can have two, three, four, but I recommend that you don't go above four. So within these four duplicated products, be sure to test different images as well as different titles. You wanna test one thing at a time so that you know exactly what is working and what is not working. But in addition to that, another important thing you can do and what I was doing as well is testing different prizes. You can test both lower prizes, you can test higher prizes. And what you're trying to do here is you're trying to find out exactly what price is going to get you those consistent sales long-term because you don't really wanna price it so high that you're making a lot of profits, but you're only getting a few sales on any given day and some days you're not even making any sales. You want it to be where you're getting decent amount of profit Profits, but the sales are coming in very, very consistently on a daily basis. That is your main goal with this strategy right here of duplicating the product. But these specific things are exactly what I did on this Shopify store in order to remain consistent throughout the weeks and throughout the months. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.